you since the, the, the move, obviously, in the summer. Um, how, how has it gone for you so far with that sort of time and the time you're leaving? Yeah, it's been really good. It's um, it's been a bit busy couple of months, but I've uh, I've enjoyed it. You know, getting uh, into playing Premier League football and adapting to the speed and the level of the players. It's it's been really enjoyable. It's been hard work, but uh, you know, it's a long road ahead, and I can't wait to continue it. And how has the step up been? Um, I think the fact that I had been exposed to international level really helped with the step up. I wasn't going straight from. League One, not being exposed to that level, I'd face top quality opposition at international level, which which definitely really helped me. In terms of international level that you mentioned there, and moving to a Premier League club, how big do you think that is for you and for your future with Ireland? Um, I think it's it's the same as it, as it was before. I think if you're playing, um, you know, obviously with the Premier League, it's a different level. But as soon as you're on the pitch, you get to express yourself and show your level. So all I'm doing is at a different stage. And how do you see the uh, battle for places in terms of being Ireland's number one? Obviously, you've got Mark Travers and Green and Keller. H how do you see that situation? Uh, I think we've got, you know, myself and then two really, really strong goalkeepers who uh, are really talented and. Uh, you know, all I can focus on is my own performances. All I can do is go out there and perform as well as I can every week uh, and show the manager what I can do. But I can imagine he's going to have a headache because um, we've got really good goalkeepers. And if you are playing on Thursday, one player you won't be facing is Erling Haaland. Yeah, um, I mean, he's uh, obviously a brilliant player, but um, I'm sure it will still be a, a tough match. They've got a lo lot of other good players, and uh, all we can do is go out there and put on our best performance about against whoever's against us. Damien Spalman, please. I mean, it's been a, a tough few weeks for, for Southampton as a team you've considered goals. You're still a very young goalkeeper. How, how do you deal with that mentally? Um, yeah, it's a challenge, but it's, um, it's a challenge that I'm looking to face head on. Um, you know, on the inside, we've been trying to address um, how we can be a lot stronger and more compact as a, as a team and concede less goals. Um, it's the whole team's efforts, so we've just got to keep working hard on that. And uh, just on Thursday, given what you did against Cristiano Ronaldo, are you disappointed that you're not coming up against Daniel Harland? Um, yeah, I mean, as a, as a player, I want to face uh, the best quality opposition I can week in, week out. But like I said before, uh, they've got many other quality players that they'll... Uh, have at their disposal on Thursday. Uh, Gavin Kinney, please. Hey, hi, Gavin. Um, I'm sure the last few months have been a bit of a whirlwind, but if you have had time to think, in what ways have you improved by playing you know, pretty much twice a week in the best league in the world? Uh, I think there's been, there's been many different ways, uh, coping to the speed of the games, but also the pressure and, you know, the, the, the crowds and, you know, I suppose the scrutiny that comes at Premier League level. Uh, but I'm just taking it in my stride and I'm enjoying every moment of it. Any particularly difficult crowds? Um, none in particular. No, they're all they're all quite tough. You know, there's a every team's got a strong support. Yeah, I think it's um, all going well. This will be the first match that you and Cleveland have been uh, available for all year. I think. Do you feel first choice like when you're coming into camp because you play more regularly? Do you feel like you're defending the jersey rather than? Um, no, I don't. I don't really feel that way. I'm just coming in here, and you know, no matter what I've done previously in in club football, I'm coming in and I'm just looking to train as hard as I can. Coming in here, and um, I've done all the work I can do up to now, and it's it's the manager's choice, whatever he decides to do. And if I'm going to be playing, I'm just going to go out there and you know perform like I normally do. I don't try to think too much about the the politics or what the manager's thinking. Ashley, please. And just on that, Gavin, on the uh, competition for places, you do a lot of your training with the other goalkeepers. Is it a friendly rivalry between y'all? Yeah, we've got a really good group between myself, Mark Quibian and, and Dean. We've got a really good and strong goalkeeping group. We've been working together for a number of years now, and anyone who watches the sessions will see that uh, whoever's playing, the other two will support, and you know we're all, we all have each other's backs, and um, we really enjoy training together. And recently you were there to see Shamrock Rovers lift their 20th league title? Yeah, yeah, that was a special moment for the club. Um, I tune in for every game that I can and uh, I enjoy still being a part of it and speaking to the players and coaches. And just with this Ireland squad at the moment, obviously it's not been, I suppose, the most successful as you would have liked. How do you block out that noise and, and look on to the future to hope to, to kick things off? 
Um, I think just as you do with everything in this sport, you've just got to concentrate on yourself. Uh, you've got to be selfish and think of you know just you and your teammates and uh, the group you've got on the inside, and you've just got to block out the noise, as you said, from the outside and concentrate on the task at hand. Uh, two wins. That's a good week. It's as simple as that. Yeah, I think so. I think this this is a very important window for us to build momentum heading into March. Um, so I don't see why we can't go out here and uh, get two wins. Mark, please. There you go. Um, what was your initial reaction when you saw the draw for the girls? Uh, excitement. Yeah. yeah, it really was. I, I Like I said, I want to play against the best in the world. Uh, I want to challenge myself against the best. So to see uh, the top quality nations that came out in, in the draw was exciting for me. And, and, and confidence too? The confidence is, um, you know, it's, it, I suppose for me, it's the confidence of the anticipation of facing these players and knowing um, that if these guys are the best in the world, that these are the best people to compare yourself against. Um, I think if it had been an easier draw, sometimes that can add even more pressure. And to, to be up against the best, I suppose, is, um, is where we all want to be. Do you take confidence sorry, for the performance against the likes of Portugal and Serbia? Yeah, in those games we, we performed really, really well and we showed uh, in those games how, how good we can be as a team. So uh, I think it's time that we string more, more performances like that together. Gentlemen, about it. Um, I suppose I'd, I wouldn't have set myself much of a strict schedule in terms of what I would have been looking to do, um, but I'm really proud of the progress I've made over the last four years since, since moving over to the UK and uh, all I can do is continue to set my targets as high as possible and be as ambitious as I can um, and try and reach them. Um, no, not recently. I think the, the biggest adjustment was moving over from Shamrock Rovers to Manchester City at first, and since then it's been a lot easier. Ed Fitzmaurice, please. Hey, Gavin, just going back to the draw for the Euros, I know presumably you've been watching over the next month, but would you have a particular eye on, on France and uh, Holland? Yeah, I mean, now that we, we know that we've been drawn in the same group as them, you know, it would be important to, to have a look at them and see the way they play and really analyse their players. Um, but you know they're all top quality players. You watch them week in, week out at the levels they're at anyway. And just two, two of the other goalkeepers. You now you've spoken about them already. But we see Cleveland do what he did in the League Cup game. Hard to think, but it's great for Cleveland, great for Ireland. But again, it's, it's more value for Cleveland in terms of competing with you. Um, for me now, when I see Cleveland do well like that, it's it's brilliant because it pushes me on. Um, and I'd like to think the others do think the same when I do well. You know, I hope it pushes them on because as a group, um, I want both of them, Cuevie and Mark, to be playing in the Premier League week in, week out. I want to be coming up against them uh, every few games in the Premier League because, you know, that's, that's what's special about um, your fellow countrymen. You want to support them and you want to, them to be playing at the highest level as well. I just thought, sorry, we, just, we saw what happened to Mark with the, when he got the run of home when he lost his place for Neto and then we got back in. Like, did you have concerns because we're, the City got forward? Were there concerns to you at any stage that there might be a bit of a challenge there? Was, was Ralph always saying to you that you were, you were his number one you were going to stay there? Um, I never really had that concern. I was just focused week on week, uh, taking things day by day, never really worrying too much about your position because as soon as you do that, you start to play with a lot less confidence. You start to you know, overthink things and you, you just got to take it day by day. Well, I'm Philip and then John and then we'll yeah, A couple of things. I know you're, um, you're not Gareth Southgate, but um, if you were, would you come up to James Ward Prowse for the World Cup? Like you said, I'm not Gareth Southgate. Okay, so. okay, well, Gavin will do that for the World Cup. Uh, yeah, I would have, just because I can see week in, week out, day in, day out, how, how much quality ha he has. Um, and he was really disappointed not to be in, and um, I think he deserved to be here. Yeah. I mean, set pieces, there's, there's very few people who can hit a ball like he can, just from a dead ball. Yeah, definitely, he's got a real weapon. Yeah. Okay, well, he's got to work, maybe. Oh, uh, Nathan Jones, early, early impressions, please. 
Yeah, so like you said, it's only been very early. Only uh, met him first on Thursday and um, worked with him then on Friday leading into the game on Saturday. Uh, but he's been really good, you know, spoken to player, a lot of players one on one and um, told them about the principles he wants to bring into the team. So I'm looking forward um, to this break now to see uh, what we're going to work on. Did you get a chance to talk to Cleveland? Yeah, I spoke to him briefly after the game. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's amazing to be able, able to play in these amazing atmospheres and amazing stadiums. Uh, got a few more that I want to play at, but um, I can't, looking forward to it, I can't wait. You did play Salad earlier this year, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just a point with me, it's a slightly quirky one, sorry, kid. But um, Adam Mann is still going strong at 41. You know, Shea Gibbon, we talked to him last week, he played, he was 40, you know, you're only 20, you've cramped a lot of matches already. You know, do you see yourself all being well, given the clean bit of health? Yeah, and another one is Willie Caballero. He's he's still training every day, 41. He's involved in every session. He's still flying around. He loves it. And I think the biggest thing is how much passion and how much love you have for the game. That's what will drive you to that level. Obviously, depending on your body as well. But I think um, I try to look after myself every day. So if my body can withstand it, I can't see why not. Um, Um, I think they they were they were disappointing for me because um, I know the levels we can play at from the Serbia and Portugal games uh, that we played, and I don't think I think in in part of the game against Scotland we showed that um, it just wasn't a rounded performance. And similarly in uh, the Armenia game, there was just a 10-15 minute spell where we let ourselves down. Um, but I think going into these next two games, if we can have a more rounded performance and stay a bit more consistent, uh, we should come out with two good results. And just finally, at Southampton, you mentioned the Euro draw. You've a couple of French lads. Have they been talking about the draw? Or I know they're not in the squad, but are they looking ahead to next year, maybe breaking in? No, no, I've not spoken to them about that at all. Okay, okay thanks, guys. Thanks for your patience. Thank you. Thank you.